Would you like to accelerate your career and reach your full potential in just minutes a day? Welcome to the LeadX Show with New York Times bestselling author and Inc. 500 entrepreneur, Kevin Cruz. What are some simple ways to get and stay organized? Hello everyone, Kevin Cruz here, helping you to achieve your full potential five days a week. And in just a minute, we're gonna talk about ways to get more organized. But first, don't forget to visit leadx.org. You'll find hundreds of articles from the best business and career writers out there. And sign up for our quick read newsletter. It's packed with actionable tips you can try out right away. Visit leadx.org. Our guest today is the owner of Hope Unlimited, providing collaborative virtual assistance and business soft skill education for overwhelmed professionals so that they can excel. She's an author, a speaker, nearly 30 years of experience in office administration and administrative management. She is the author of 52 Ways to Be More Organized. Our guest is Beth Butler. Beth, welcome to the show. Hi, nice to be here. Oh, I'm excited to have you on. We're going to talk about getting more organized in just a minute. But uh, first, I always like to ask our guests, can you share a time when you failed, maybe early in your career, and what did you learn from it? Well, early earlier in my career, I've been, been in administrative work for most of my career, but I worked for a nonprofit organization, a national one, and I was an uh, administrative assistant in the communications and development department. And uh, as I recall it, we were all a great group of people to work together, and I was given the opportunity to become the lead administrative assistant. And I declined the opportunity out of fear that it would change the dynamic with my coworkers. Mm. And as I look back on that, um, I feel that was a failure of judgment on my part because I, one, I didn't end up really staying in touch with a lot of those people as we <laughs> moved on to other careers anyway. So it wasn't like there was super deep friendships, not saying you can't become friends at work, but in that case, there, there weren't. Um, and I think I missed out on some, some healthy management type leadership uh, opportunity because I was nervous that, you know, they wouldn't like me or something like that. So that would be something I look back on that I kind of regret. Thankfully, I had later opportunities to be an office manager in my career, and now I lead a company. But I think it, I could have learned some things early on if I had had more confidence. Wow, Beth, you you are a selfless individual. Most people would throw their best <laughs> friend under a bus to get a promotion or to get ahead. And you're like, no, 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 let's not change the office dynamic too much. <laughs> well, well, it was somewhat self selfish in the sense that, you know, I like to be liked, you know, what guess most people do. But right. um, and so you just didn't want to, I don't really, you know, didn't want a lot of conflict. And honestly, it may have been of help to my coworkers too. You know, I'm I hear I was assuming it might have been negative, but maybe I could have done some things that would have been helpful to them. And I didn't think that through that way. Yeah, that's, that's right. I was going to say by, by accepting that, I mean, they may have been, they might've been, you know, happier than anything to have someone they trusted and, you know, you, you know, they were confident in you, you might've been worked, worked out for them as well. Yeah. Okay. So Beth, your book is 52 ways to be more organized. And obviously we can't cover all 52 on this uh, short <laughs> podcast, but, um, you know, what are some of your favorite tips for people, you know, in office professionals who are super crazy busy as we all seem to be these days? Well, let me give you a couple of practical ones. One tool I have found is helpful is to keep a small dry erase board at my desk. Uh, so often we take sticky notes and pieces of scrap paper and jot things down real quick and all that. And they end up staying on our desk and cluttering <laughs> up the visual field of our desk. And, you know, they may be old and never, we don't need them anymore, but we're just used to them being there with a dry erase board. You can quickly jot down that number and then erase it when you're done or transfer it to something on your computer. So that's a that's a real practical one. Uh, record reminders to yourself on the fly. Almost all of us carry smartphones now and have either uh, OK Google or Siri or you know some kind of uh, assistant like that, that you can just say, hey, remind me if, you know, you think of things sometimes in an impractical place. <laughs> and so right, if you right. can pull your phone out and say, hey, remind me of uh, this particular person I need to call or tasks that I need to remember. Now, I wouldn't do that for recurring tasks. You need to manage those probably with a task management system. But we all have those occasional things that, oh, it's my friend's birthday, you know, send her a text later, things like that, that you can record or message. 
Uh, and then I also would suggest that people really try to reserve the last half hour of their work day to try to get their in- inbox as close to inbox zero as possible. I'm a big believer in that. Uh, I know some people are probably out there like, oh, yeah, sure, I can't get there. <laughs> but you really can uh, if you can keep up with it every day and also just kind of know what's coming the next day and just clean your desk up a little bit. And if you have to do things like timesheets, record your time day by day. I remember working somewhere where people would have to try to recreate timesheets, you know, later. And it's just such a headache to try to remember if you don't keep up with it. So reserve that last half hour for those cleanup tasks. Yeah, uh, a lot of great, a lot of great tips uh, here. And I I just want to you know, support this idea of inbox zero. I mean, people think that that's crazy. Oh, I get hundreds a day. Um, I also uh, tell everybody they should really strive for inbox zero. And, you know, everybody can tweak their own system. Myself, I call it uh, 3210, my own system. And I check email. Well, I should, let me take that back. I don't check email. I process email because there you go. yeah, That's you don't, <laughs> you don't want to be responding to every buzz and ding and little pop-up window, you know, throughout your day that interrupts your focus, you know, your, your, uh, your attention. So instead I just schedule times on my calendar where I'm going to process email. I try to do it in the morning around noon and then at the end of the day. And I spend about 20 minutes a time, uh, 21 minutes, uh, uh, you know, if I'm going to use a Pomodoro type system. Sure. And the goal is to get to inbox zero. And and Beth, I think you're right. Like once you get the hang of it, uh, you can uh, really get down to inbox zero, especially if you turn a lot of those tasks into calendar entries, right? Put them onto your right. calendar. Mm-hmm calendar or on a task management list. That's exactly right. People use their inbox as their task list, which is kind of a major mistake. I mean, you don't leave, you you don't, you leave your snail mail out in your mailbox. Almost all of us go and check our mail every day when we get home, right? (laughs) We don't leave it piling up for days and days and days. Well, maybe some do, but a lot of people don't. And yet our inbox, our electronic mail somehow becomes our task list and we don't mind that piling up. And it's just visual clutter. And there's just so much that gets buried sometimes that and there are sometimes people don't respond very well. And then that goes down a whole nother route. If you're not responsive, then your level of professionalism goes down a little bit in the eyes of others. So it's really just a smart thing to try to stay on top of that. Love and that. If you can't, if you can't get it to zero, at least get it to only one screen worth, you know, where you're not, <laughs> having to, you're not having to scroll down every, you know, for hours to get to the bottom of it. Right. Right. It's a small steps, get to one screen yeah. worth as a, as a first, yeah. uh, as a first move. Right. So what about um, any specific advice for uh, road warriors? You know, I'm probably on an airplane, eh, if not once a week, once every other week, a lot of hotels and all that. What kind of tips would you have for us? Well, uh, I would suggest that you carry a few things with you that kind of helps you create a makeshift office that anywhere you go, like, you know, the desk in your hotel room or the coffee shop, that you have a few familiar items that you can set up something that feels comfortable to you with your laptop. You might even bring a small photo of uh, your family that you can just kind of set up next to your laptop because if you hot, hot desk, they call it, you know, you're moving around from desk right. to desk. You, it Sometimes it's nice to have something that it just reminds you of home or reminds you of, you know, stabi- some stability there. Uh, so you should always carry that. Obviously carry good earphones um, because wherever you are at, you can drown out the ambient noise and focus more uh, uh, with playlist that motivates you. So have good earphones. Some people benefit from carrying something like an essential oil mix that helps them stay focused or kind of freshens the room they're staying in that if that works for you, then, you know, get something and have that with you. And ideally, if you're traveling, you don't want to have to repack everything from scratch. And I'm sure you're, you're probably much more seasoned than I am as travelers, but there's probably some things that you kind of almost keep in your suitcase every, you know, all the time. And then you just have to kind of shift things, you know, put new clothes in, take the other ones out. Uh, so I would recommend people have a travel pack separate from the things that they use every day in their office. You have a, have a second mouse, for example, if you, I, I tend to, I don't like touch pads, so I tend to have a mouse, uh, a couple of mice. And it's best to keep one all the time in your laptop bag separately from the one you may use 
Yeah, that's that is great. And I find I mean, it feels um, sort of uh, sort of like an indulgence at first because you're you're spending money on doubles of stuff. But right. but I I it, it, it just saves so much aggravation of either you're packing up for the trip, trying to remember everything. I used to have a checklist and then, I, you, you know, I'd forget something or I'd leave it in the bag and then I'm back uh, at the office and it's not with me. And finally, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to buy a second uh, phone charger, second Mac Absolutely. charger, a second mouse, a second, um, everything yes. and just keep it in the computer bag at all times. So I don't have to pack things up and unpack all the time. Yeah. I think that's a great, you could even do that, you know, in your own office or if you work at home and there's nothing saying you can't have a charger in two different rooms. If you tend to right. charge something both in your home office and in your bedroom, you know, they're not that expensive for the peace of mind of not having to constantly remember you know, to re to have those things. I recently, uh, just got a new, uh, new iPhone. And I think when I bought the new phone, I bought five, <laughs> five chargers. <Yeah. laughs> the guy thought like I made a mistake or was buying the, I was going to pick which of the five I want. I'm like, no, I want all of them. <laughs> yeah. mul multiple cars and offices and right. travel bags and everything else. So one other tip for traveling too is to find some familiar. If you go to the same towns, so some people travel to the same, same city frequently. Is to find um, hotels and coffee shops that you that you like, so that you can go back to some of those same places to work. And that way, if you have to be <clears throat> away from home a lot, you can kind of build up a little bit of a, a friendly atmosphere in another city. That's Love kind that. Of a, second city and not, not start from scratch every time. Yeah. I like that. I like that piece of advice. Now your company offers, um, virtual assistant services to obviously a lot of different busy professionals. Yep. Uh, in fact, many of my consultant author speaker friends are clients of yours. Yes. So I'm sure you've seen it all over the years. I mean, what are some tips for those of us who, you know, want to work successfully with a, with a remote VA? What advice could you give us? Well, there are two or three things that I would say are very important. First of all, before you even engage a VA, is to really decide what you would want to hand over and uh, to really nail it down to maybe two or three tasks only at first. It's a little different hiring a VA, uh, which is more of an independent contractor, than to have an employee that's in physical, the same physical space you are. Right. Because, you know, if you have an assistant that comes in and works 20 hours a week and she's right there with you or he's right there with you, you can talk and learn along the way. But there's a little longer learning curve with a VA. And uh, so I, I suggest that clients just start out with one or two things. And there are folks that love the idea of a VA, but they never can really nail down what they want that VA to do <laughs> for them. So some of the best clients are ones that will say, I want you just to, to scan my email for the following three types of emails and archive them. And some, some will even, I have one that made videos that would train, you know, uh, what I want you to do with yep. that particular email. And over time, as a trust and a rapport is developed, then you can start adding more and more things. And eventually, there's going to be even more where the VA can take some decision making process off of you. So uh, that's, that's probably one of the most important things. Uh, also being very clear with the instructions, like I said, use a task management system such as uh, Asana or Basecamp. If you've got uh, especially if you've got a team of several remote workers, so they have one spot they can log in and you're not conducting all your projects by email because then everybody gets copies and right. it starts piling up that inbox. And then also I think an important thing because virtual assisting is really kind of coming into its own now is to remember that most VAs are running a business and you're not their only client. Um, and so they, you need to understand like Hope Unlimited, we have a number of clients and one of our niche services is we help people that may only need something done two hours or less a week, but it's wow. that one pesky task that needs to be done. And they just love that they have a team they could throw it to. Uh, and we have, a, we have a couple of clients that use us several hours a week, but we do have multiple clients and it's very important for each client to understand that even though we want you to feel like you're our only client, it's set up in a way where we're, we're putting time into other clients too. And because it's through retainer packages, you know, to be fair, we have to focus on our other clients. We're not going to be as readily available as somebody who you hire to be 10 or 15 hours at your office. So you have to kind of have a little give and take with the how quickly people respond. Now, we try to be very responsive and we don't have any complaints about that, that I, you know, that I'm aware of. But sometimes we can't just focus on 
client A for eight straight hours and be, be on call for that. So as long as you understand that, we're VA services are great for entrepreneurs or executives. Here's something. The executives that are busy in a corporate job, one of my clients actually hired me separately to help him with managing some of just his personal calendar or his his flights to places or right. things like that. And I've done a lot of interesting things, different things for him or, be, you know, if you have a large family or something, you want your kids' school calendars put on your calendar. That is great for a VA to do a task to be sent to a VA to do. Yeah. And, you know, my experience, um, Beth, I've, uh, I've used VAs on and off for years. And, and right now I, I have a full time, a 40 hour a work, uh, remote, uh, mm -hmm. VA who's working out great. I've, and I've, you know, I've had some bad stories over the years and just to support what you're saying. I mean, I think for those of you who are out there, executives or entrepreneurs who are thinking about, well, what would they do or, or how would this work? I mean, what I've learned is they can do a whole lot more than you than you initially might think. I mean, mm -hmm. I would encourage people to really trust and assume that they can do it. And in the spirit of, you know, maximizing our 14, 40 minutes a day, you know, the, the most productive people are always asking, you know, as they go through their tasks, am I the only one who can do this mm. thing? And it wasn't, I mean, I write about productivity and stuff and, and Beth, it was only a couple of years ago that I stopped and said, you know, it's always about that stop doing list. And, and, and I exactly what you said. It's like, oh my gosh, here's 14 different holidays at three different schools that my three kids right. are in. <laughs> That's it's right. going to take me <laughs> half a day to enter this in, into my calendar. And it, and it never <laughs> occurred to me to just give it to a, a, a remote VA, a you know, yeah, a virtual assistant. And that now I'm doing it with my son is in basketball and soccer. There's so many schedules, the games, the practices. Right. Um, so all of this scheduling stuff, in addition to the work stuff, all these personal scheduling things uh, get get put on the calendar now. And again, I maybe people are going to think I'm crazy, but what I have found is very quickly – VAs, the, the VAs I've worked with have been, you know, very trustworthy. They've earned my trust very quickly. They end up with my passwords. They end up with at least yes. one low limit credit card. I tell yes. them, if you can't get in touch with me, do what you would do. And if it's wrong, <laughs> I'll say, okay, here's how we'll do it differently next time. And I'm right. not disappointed. I mean, no one's ever betrayed that trust. And, um, you have so much more to gain by working with someone to, to help you to stay in, you know, your most productive uh, mode. So anyway, big, big believer. Absolutely. In them. Big believer. So uh, Beth, I always like to challenge our listeners to become a little bit better, like 1% better every single day. So I'm wondering, do you have a challenge for us today? I would challenge the listeners to make one small tweak to either your evening routine or your morning routine, whichever, pick one, and do one small thing to improve upon it. It may be that you're going to do one more thing in the evening before going to bed that's going to set you up for a better day, or you're going to take some time in the morning to do something important to you before you start the day. Uh, I use a timer in the morning, an interval timer, to help me progress through some things that are important to me personally to start every day with, and it kind of keeps me on track and helps me not get so, you know, off on a tangent. So that would be my suggestion. If you can get a good morning routine going or a good evening routine going, and they're always a work in progress <laughs> as the seasons change and so forth. So always evaluate them and, and set yourself up for success that way. Love it. And uh, what's the best way our listeners can find out more about you and your company? My website is bethbutler.com and that's B-E-U-T-L-E-R, Butler. And that is the central spot where you can find everything about what we offer for virtual assisting, uh, our other types of resources, and all our social media connections as well. Um, I do send out a, a blog post every Monday. Would love to have some of your readers um, subscribe to that. And if they subscribe, they can get a free uh, list of steps to clean up that inbox in 18 minutes. So 18 minutes, even better than my 21 minutes. minutes. <laughs> right? I'm going to have to get this so I can shave three <laughs> minutes off my email routine. <laughs> right. I'd love, love to have people visit the site. And if they have any questions, they can contact me through the site. 
All right. Friends, you've just been mentored today by an organizational expert. Don't forget, you can get all the links and notes from this interview over at leadx.org. You can get Beth's book from amazon.com, your favorite bookstore. And listeners, one more thing. If you've got even one new idea from the LeadX show, I hope you'll go on to iTunes, subscribe to LeadX, and just leave a short, honest review. It would mean the world to me. So until next time, remember, leadership is about influence, not about authority. So leadership is not a choice. We know we are leaders whether we want to be or not. The question is, what kind of leader will you be? 